Hi, and welcome to Dr. V's AP Chemistry webcast. Today we're focusing on titrations. Now, this is a really important lab technique, a really important analytical tool, and something that hopefully you've done by this point. Um, but if you haven't, let's talk a little bit about the setup. In a titration, you have a buree, which contains one solution, and then it's above a beaker containing another solution. And the buree can very accurately dispense the one solution that it contains into the other one. We know the concentration of one of them, but not the other. Now, this is an acid-base titration setup, uh, but there are other kinds of titrations as well. Now, in an acid-base titration, we're going to either use a pH meter or an indicator to figure out when the titration is over. So when it's over, we call that the equivalence point. And what that means is that the acid and base are in their stoichiometric ratios based on the balance equation. Uh, the indicator might change color, or we're looking for a certain pH, different ways to know that we're done with our particular titration. So what I'd like to do is start by talking about strong acid, strong base titrations. The general equation for a titration is that an acid and a base make water and a salt. These are neutralization reactions. You can think of them as double displacement reactions as well. But specifically, if we have a strong acid with a strong base, our net ionic equation, H plus plus OH minus makes H2O. We've got other counter ions in there. They're spectator ions. They're not doing much. One thing I do want to point out in a strong acid, strong base titration, the salt that we create will be a neutral salt. It won't affect the pH of the solution at the end. So when we're doing a titration of a strong acid with a strong base, first I want to point out just the terminology here. When I say I'm titrating a strong acid, I mean the acid solution and the indicator are in the flask. And I mean the base solution is in the buree. It's important that you know this terminology because sometimes test questions are set up assuming that you know this. All right. When we're looking at the initial sample of our acid in the flask, this is a strong acid, and so it's completely dissociated. So if this strong acid is HCl, for example, all the HCl molecules have dissociated into H plus ions and chloride ions. I've left out all the water molecules for clarity here, otherwise it would be very overwhelming. I believe there are 10 H pluses and 10 Cl minuses. 100% ionization, that's of course what we expect with a strong acid. All right. As we start the titration, we, we're going to initially have a very low pH. And as we start to add the base from the buree, the pH is going to go up very, very slowly. All right, and so we see that in the graph here. We see a slow increase in pH for, uh, as we add the titrant, the NaOH here from the buree, it increases very gradually for really quite a while. You're adding this very slowly as you go. All right, as you add the hydroxide, some of the H plus ions are consumed. They react with the OH minus ions that you're added. They make water. Now, of course, we still have our spectator ions. The chloride ions here are a spectator ion. We're adding in sodium ions from the NaOH. All right, so we have some of those as well. So instead of having 10 H pluses left, all right, I've used up four of them here. I've added four OH minuses, made four waters, and now I have four Na pluses that I've added in my picture models. It's kind of important that you understand what we've got at different in the solution at different points in the titration. All right. Now, the equivalence point, remember, is where the acid and the base are going to end up in their stoichiometric ratio. If it's an HCl with NaOH titration, that's going to be a one-to-one -one ratio. As we start to get close to that equivalence point, the pH goes up very, very quickly. It's really, really sharp. All right. And so at the equivalence point, the moles of acid that we initially had present are going to equal the moles of base that we added from the buree. That's a really important thing to remember. All right. Um, you do have to keep the mole ratios in mind, of course. At this point, the solution contains water and um, the salt. And the salt here is made from the cation of the base, which was the uh, Na+, and the anion of the acid, which was Cl-. All right. But they're really dissociated. They're not really together to form a compound. They're hanging around in solution as spectator ions. All right. So keep in mind, at the equivalence point, all of the hydrogen ions have been consumed by an equal number of OH- ions. We still have our chloride ions from the HCl. We've added in enough Na plus ions. 
um, equal to the number of hydroxide ions present, and we've taken all of our H pluses and reacted them with enough OH minuses to make water. So I don't have any H plus left. All right, I don't have any uh, OH minus present. I'm at the equivalence point. They've all been used up. So I have 10 water molecules that I hadn't had before. Okay. Um, the major species at the equivalence point are water, the sodium ions, and the chloride ions. It's really important that you understand what we have at the different pieces. All right, at this point in the uh, titration, that's what we've got. So one thing I do want to point out, remember the salt we made is a neutral salt. So for a strong acid, strong base titration, the pH will be 7 at the equivalence point. Also, if we've used an appropriate indicator, the indicator will have changed color. All right, and so you want to pick an indicator that's going to turn color at just about a pH of 7. Uh, in this particular image, I use pink, indicating that I might have used phenolphthalein. Um, Brubalthymol blue could also be an appropriate choice here. If you continue to add excess base, the pH will go up and then eventually plateau off at a fairly high pH, all right, because you have excess hydroxide ions in solution beyond the equivalence point. And so that's what I'm trying to show here in the picture model. I have excess hydroxide ions. I have excess sodium ions. I still have my leftover chloride ions. All right. I've left out the water molecules because it would have been way too complicated. But I've got this excess hydroxide, and that's why my pH, pH went up. All right. Let's go on and talk about weak acid strong base titrations. Now, the net ionic equation here is a little bit different because I have a weak acid. It's not going to dissociate appreciably. Less than 5% of the molecules will have dissociated. They'll react with the hydroxide ion to make water, and then I will have the conjugate base of the weak acid. Now, there is a salt in there, right? There was a cation for the OH minus, um, but Again, those are going to be dissociated, all right? So the salt contains the conjugate base of the weak acid. And so that's going to affect the pH at the equivalence point. It won't be at 7 in a weak acid strong base titration, all right? So when you're doing a weak acid strong base titration, all right, I'm saying that the weak acid is in the flask, all right? The base is in the buree, as before. What you'll notice if you look at the titration curve, the initial pH is low, but it's not as low as the pH of, an, of a strong acid solution of the same concentration. All right, that's an important thing to note when you're doing your weak acid titration. All right, at the beginning of the titration in the flask, the dominant species will be HA molecules. Less than 5% of them will have dissociated into H plus and A minus. I chose not to show that here because I thought it would be overwhelming. And for the 10 molecules that I've got here, I couldn't even have one dissociated and still keep everything proportional. So I chose to leave that out here for simplicity. I also left out the water molecules. I left out the indicator, but the indicators in the flask with the acid as well, along with lots and lots of water molecules. All right, but the HA molecule is what's important. As we add some hydroxide ion, the hydroxide ion is going to react with the HA to make water, and then I'll make my salt, which of course is dissociated. Um, so I've got my conjugate base, and I've got the counter ion for the strong base. All right, so in this case, the sodium ion is a spectator. All right, and so as I add some NaOH, I'm going to have some HA left. But I've also made some A minus ions, the conjugate base ions. I've got them both present. So effectively, I have a buffer for this portion of the titration. I'm changing the ratio of HA to A minus continually. You can use the Henderson Hasselbalch equation in this portion of the titration to talk about the pH. All right. So the pH is going to slowly increase in this buffer region. All right. As I start to add hydroxide ion. Now, when we're halfway to the equivalence point, where I have half as many moles of hydroxide ion added as moles of initial HA, there's a special relationship here at the half equivalence point, where the concentration of HA molecules that haven't reacted yet equal the concentration of A minus, the conjugate base ions that I've produced, which is an interesting thing to note because at the half equivalence point, the pH would then equal the pKa of the weak acid. 
And so I can measure the pH at this point. I get the pKa from that. I can find the equilibrium constant of the weak acid if I want to. That's very handy to know. At the equivalence point, of course, the initial moles of HA that I've added equal the moles of hydroxide added. Usually, we're talking about a one-to-one -one ratio here. So I don't have any HA left at the equivalence point. I don't have any OH minus left at the equivalence point. All right. The dominant species at the equivalence point is the conjugate base, A minus. All right. And I've, of course, generated water along the, the <laughs> in the process. I've got water molecules. I've got my sodium ions that I've added that were the cation from the base. All right. But the pH will be greater than 7 at the equivalence point because of the presence of this conjugate base. All right, that's the dominant species. You need to be able to state this is why the pH is greater than 7 at the equivalence point in a weak acid strong base titration because the conjugate base will hydrolyze with water and make a, a basic solution. All right, the other thing I wanted to point out is that uh, the weaker the acid, the higher that initial pH will be, and the endpoint the, uh, becomes much less clear. It's a much more subtle change. It's more spread out as the acids get weaker. So we have a strong acid at the bottom. Uh, as we go up the graph here, you'll see that they're getting successively weaker. You can see the Ka values are getting smaller, and it gets harder and harder and harder to see the inflection point if you're measuring pH versus volume of titrant added. I did briefly want to talk about titrations of polyprotic acids. These are more complicated, but what you see is that we have an equivalence point for each dissociation, for each H plus that's being consumed as part of the titration. So in a triprotic acid, such as H3PO3, we're going to actually see more than one inflection point. All right. Now, the last thing I want to talk about very briefly are weak base strong acid titrations. So I'm, I have my H plus from the strong acid. I'm adding it to the base. I'm going to be making the conjugate acid of the weak base as the reaction occurs. So the setup here is that my flask now contains the weak base and an appropriate indicator. The strong acid is in the buree. That's what we're saying with this setup. All right. So my initial pH is quite high. It's going to get lower as I go through the titration. The no dominant species in the flask would be the base molecule. Now, I've set this up to be analogous to ammonia because I thought that was familiar. Uh, I left out the water molecules for clarity. I thought it was going to be too complicated. Um, but that's the dominant species in the flask is the weak base. I've also left out the indicator molecules. As I continue to add my acid from the puree, the pH is going to drop. All right, it started very high. It's going to get lower. At the half titration point, halfway to the equivalence point, the concentration of base remaining will equal the concentration of conjugate acid that I've produced. And so we can actually state that at the half titration point, the pOH is equal to the pKB. Now, of course, we're measuring usually pH here, so you have to do a little extra math with these kinds of problems, but they are doable. All right. All right. So at the equivalence point, I've used up all my weak base. I've turned it all into the conjugate acid. That's the dominant species in solution. Now, of course, I do also have the conjugate um, base of the strong acid or that anion, which isn't really doing anything. Okay, um, It will react with water. To calculate the pH here, you're going to need to do an ice problem. They get fairly involved. That's not my focus here in this particular webcast, though. All right. The pH will be less than 7 at the equivalence point because of the presence of the conjugate acid. All right. So you need to choose an indicator that will change color at the correct pH. So uh, since the pH is going to be less than 7, methyl red might be a good choice. Something with a, a pKa that's close to the pH that you expect this, uh, at the equivalence point for this titration. Great. Well, I hope you uh, feel like you understand titrations a little bit better.